Hello, and welcome to everything you need to know about research methods in media. We are going to be covering everything from qualitative data to triangulation. Let's start off with types of research, primary and secondary. Primary research is research you do yourself to find out about your own product and to find out about your audience. Think of it as a self-centered type of research. Examples of this can be desk research, aka sitting at a desk using the internet wisely to look at study samples or something similar to your product. Another example of this is focus groups, questionnaires, interviews, or just directly talking to people. So I made an example questionnaire to show you what actually goes into one, but we'll get on to that later. Moving on to secondary research. This is where you find research that already exists. Think of it as the copycat research. Kinda. Warning, warning, you must give credit to the people who did this research. This is why we will have a very long bibliography at the end. No, but seriously, it's really important to give people credit for their work. Some ways to do this are to surf the web for information on products that already exist. Meaning, how they were made, how successful they were, budgets, timelines, and so on. A different way is to research into audiences, productions, and markets carried out by previous researchers. The last way is to research into the subject matter for your product. Remember, don't do all your research on the internet. Anyway, it's really important to use both types of research. That way, it'll make your findings and research more professional. I personally think that primary data is better when doing your own projects, as it helps you to understand your audience and what they want. Although primary research may be better for the actual project, you should do some secondary research to help back up some of the points you pitch. Moving on to actual data. There are also two types of this, qualitative and quantitative. I'm sure you know what these mean because of math, but I'm going to explain them anyway to get more marks. Qualitative data is a soft data, meaning that it's based off opinions, feelings, thoughts, and ideas. It usually comes in forms of written or recorded responses, analyses of conversations, and open questions. What do people like? Why do they do the things they do? Why do some things work and others fail? Just think about these for a moment. Okay. Moment over. Meanwhile, quantitative data is facts, figures, numbers, and statistics. Budgets, timelines, and personnel also go into this category. This data is easily gathered and can be easily presented. The questions asked are usually closed and in the form of questionnaires or surveys. The data can be presented in graphs, charts, and diagrams. Qualitative data is useful for when you have an idea or rough cut and need or want feedback on it. Since it's more opinion-based, it's better for after you finish your audience research, although it could be useful to have one or two questions in your initial Initial survey. Quantitative data, on the other hand, is better for your audience survey. As said previously, it's more factual and easier to put into charts and diagrams. By using quantitative data for initial research, it's much easier to display professionally in pre-production. Speaking of questionnaires, remember that questionnaire advice I was supposed to give you earlier? Well, here it is. So, to make a good questionnaire, it has to be presented well. Make it look professional. Put your logo on it. Next, start with a filter question. Like here, I started with the question, do you like movies such as The Kissing Booth and To All the Boys I Loved Before? See all the people who click no? Well, they're probably no use to you. Moving on. Keep it short. Probably around 10 questions, one page. Remember all those questionnaires that they said they were going to take like two minutes but really took 10? Yeah, don't be that person. Number four. Use closed questions. Use tick boxes and multiple choices too. We're looking for quantitative data, remember? Now, you must send it to people who are actually in your target audience. Don't just send it to your friends and who you think will actually fill it in. Also, try to get a good sample. Mix it up. Boys and girls, different ages, and anyway, if you don't get a really um diverse sample, just acknowledge it. Also, you have to think about the order of your questions. Try putting general questions like what's your gender or how old are you at the end. This way, if the questionnaire is anonymous, which I highly recommend, people won't go back and change their answers because they're scared that their identity will be found out or something. I know, it's weird. Lastly, while using scales, try not to use frequently or often as these are very, very general. Instead, use more specific terms like once a week or every day, always or never. So, you might be wondering what triangulation is. Don't worry, I was too when I first learned about it. It's basically using three different types of data or research for your audience research. Think about it like this. How many sides does a triangle have? Three. In triangulation, how many different types of data do you use? Three. Coincidence? 
I think not. So the easiest way to do this is by one, sending out a questionnaire, two, organizing a focus group, and finally, three, show your rough cut or mock-up to a screening group. Now that's triangulation. Finally, our last topic for today is helping you with internet research. Firstly, what exactly do you want to know? Search terms are very important. A bunch of popular sites will give you limited information, for example, films and movies. If you go to IMDB in hopes of finding some useful information, chances are that you're probably not going to find anything past the plot, ratings, and possibly some reviews. Here's another thing to think about. Some sites are just unreliable. The most famous one is Wikipedia. Yes, folks, you heard it right here. Wikipedia can be edited by anyone. So if you want to find some decent information, try looking at the sources at the bottom of the page. So using that information, Here's more. Anyone can make a website. Fan sites are pretty cool and interesting, but they basically only offer trivia and information about the movie itself. It's interesting for fans, but not really for filmmakers like us. On that note, this doesn't mean you should avoid these sites completely. Just be aware of what you're reading and treat it accordingly. Speaking of research, here are real life examples. Since I'm making a rom-com for one of my projects, let's talk about those. Examples of real life movies that fit into the genre of a rom-com are The Proposal, The Kissing Booth, Crazy Rich Asians, and To All the Boys I Love Before. What makes these movies a rom-com? Each movie has a plot that emphasizes that love can conquer all. Another thing is that the color palette will probably have reds, pinks, and sometimes orange hues. The plot is light-hearted and funny most of the time with a couple dramatic moments. For example, to all the boys I love before, Lara Jean's bedroom, the main character, is blue and pink. The bed is a pale pink with a darker pink blanket and her drawers and desk are also pink and white. Her lamps are also a pink shade and her laptop is pink. She also usually wears pinks, reds, and blues. All this pink signifies her innocence and love. Wait, no, 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 wait. There's one last piece of information. I know it's a lot. I'm sorry. But Please remember to give credit to the people if you use their work. Write a bibliography. It is very important. Or like, you know, as we year 11 say, write it, baby Oh. Anyway, remember to use all of this information to get a distinction in your next assignment. Good luck, kids, on your journey to make your media teachers happy. Peace out, kids. Now, cue the long bibliography.